Welcome to Sonic Speed Reading, where we talk about, well, Sonic the Hedgehog in printed media. You have to come up with a fun little catchphrase there, but we'll work on it. Now, I don't need to tell anybody that Sonic is a video game icon. Regardless of how you feel about any particular title, the dude's been around here for 30 years. But he's also prominent in other forms of media, obviously with that movie that came out not too long ago, and some short-lived but very beloved cartoons. But the second most prominent form of Sonic the Hedgehog outside of video games would have to be Sonic in the humble comic book. But if you've never read a Sonic comic book before, it can be a little daunting if you're trying to jump in. I mean, there's nearly 30 years of this stuff to jump into. What counts as continuity? What counts as his own storyline? What's the good stuff? What's the bad stuff? How much of this do I really need to read? Well, that's kind of the whole point of this show. We're going to break all this down for you, make sense of these characters, these relationships, why these are so beloved, why a lot of this is also not so beloved, some of the crazy drama behind the scenes, and all kinds of stuff. But we're not not going to get into any of that today. Today, we're going to tackle the question, where should you start with Sonic comic books? Well, the answer is very, very simple. You start with issue one of IDW's Sonic comic series. This is the most recent incarnation of Sonic comics. So there's a couple obvious reasons why you should start here as opposed to digging up some stuff in the past. For the most real world of reasons, right now this is the only book that is being published. Therefore, it's the only Sonic comic book out there with a staff that needs to get paid to make a living. You start with Archie, you start with Fleetway, that money ain't going anywhere to nobody. And I don't think you can even really buy those things outside of like secondhand stuff or what you can find online. And uh, yeah. Secondly, well, it's just much more straightforward than anything else you're going to be finding with Fleetway or Archie. And we will get into that in their own episodes. The IDW book takes place in the Sonic gaming universe. And those are already pretty easy enough to follow, especially these days for better or worse. And third, and probably the most important reason why you should start with this one is that it's really good. You can see there's a lot of love and care for this franchise in each and every page, in every single word bubble, in every panel. And I can tell you growing up with the Archie book, that wasn't always the case. Even YouTubers that focus solely on comic books usually don't even touch the Sonic stuff. But when they do, they usually talk about IDW Sonic, and they're usually talking about how good this is, and how surprised that it is as good as it is. And for folks that have been reading Sonic comics for the longest time, it's no surprise surprise. Archie Sonic was messy for many, many years, but eventually Ian Flynn would take over the book. And despite all the hoops he had to jump through, be it from lawsuits or from Sega mandates, he still managed to tell really compelling stories. So when Sega and Archie finally said screw it and parted ways, IDW took up the license and immediately hired basically all the creative staff that was working on the Archie book and brought them over to IDW. So this book works as a fresh start for brand new readers. It works as a continuous for Sonic Forces if you wanted more story from there. And you can see a lot of subtle hints to other story arcs that Ian was building to in the Archie book play out here. Maybe not exactly the same, but there's a lot of little things in here that makes it feel like that long running book that so many people fell in love with only skipped a few months and then got back to business. We're missing a lot of stuff, be it from Mobius or the extended cast and all these relationships. But again, we're not talking about that today. I'm coming at this as a fan of Sonic the Hedgehog as a whole and as a fan of comic books. And for someone who was curious, I would hand them issue one of IDW Sonic. The first page of the book shows Sonic facing off against a bunch of different final bosses or, well, final Eggman bosses from some of the more recent games. Quickly explaining what a lot of people probably already know. Sonic and Eggman fight a whole bunch. Sonic usually whips his butt. Most recently, Eggman took over the world in Sonic Forces. He's disappeared, and now it's up to Sonic and his friends to clean up the mess. So the book never wastes your time trying to explain why Sonic is fast or why Tails has, well, two tails. It just assumes you already know this stuff. You already know that Eggman's a bad dude. You get it. So we jump right into the action. Sonic runs into a town, saves a bunch of people from a bunch of different Eggman robots, throwing some sass in here and there, taking time in between all these speedy takedowns to help folks out and making sure they're doing okay. And in the second half of the book, Tails shows up, quickly establishing that these two are basically brothers, they're best friends, and they work well together. Taking a few more pages to show them kicking some more robot But before leaving the first issue with Sonic saying, well, I'm gonna go check out more towns, see what's going on, and Tails, you stay here and help clean up, or whatever the case is. And they end 
end the book with a new mystery. Tails explains that yes, Eggman's been taken out, and yeah, a lot of his robots have still been roaming about, but they've seemed directionless, aimless. If there's any attacks, it's usually been by accident. But recently, they seem coordinated, they seem organized. So, we got a lot of fun quips, a lot of action, a lot of camaraderie, and now we're ending this first issue with a little bit of a mystery. Is Eggman back? And if he is, why is he making a grand show of it like he usually does? What's going on? That's a pretty solid hook for a very first issue in a new universe that really strips away a lot of what the Archie Sonic has built up. And it also plays off well from a game that, well, had a lot of potential, but really didn't pay off. In each issue going from here, they build up on the mystery and also show Sonic meet up with a, one of his friends and how he relates to them. What's their relationship like? I figured a simple story wouldn't really grab me when I first picked this book up, but I became invested very quickly. And the few new characters he brings into this world just feel natural. They're all awesome. But to go any further would kind of get into spoilers. This is supposed to be a teeny tiny episode to just kind of get out the door and answer a very simple question. Now, if there are any downsides to this book, well, there are two major ones I can think of off the top of my head. One, while you don't need the previous Sonic comic books to really enjoy this one, you might be a little bit lost if you've never played a Sonic game, or more specifically, one of the more recent ones. You're going to get the best context if you've played Sonic Forces, and anything that requires you to play Sonic Forces is a negative in my book. But nasty jokes aside, there was a lot of interesting stuff in that game, and Ian really builds it up and does some really special things that I kind of wish we'd saw in the game itself, but we're going to save that for next time. The point of the negativity here is, you have to be somewhat familiar with Sonic's gaming universe outside of these main characters. Now, that might be a nothing complaint, at least at first, because like I said, some of these YouTubers that focus on other comic books and probably haven't touched a Sonic game since the 90s are really enjoying the IDW book. That said, I don't know how long these folks actually stay on with the book. Maybe they just made it through an arc or two and just, you know, threw it aside for one of the regulars. I don't know. Because as the book carries on, Ian does bring in more and more elements from the games. And while it's a great sight to see and they work really well for the story he's telling, if you hadn't say, and sorry for the slight spoilers here for the most recent arc, but if you haven't, like, played Sonic Lost World or weren't even aware of its existence since it was on a Wii U, for crying out loud, you're going through this big dramatic arc and all of a sudden these cranky, colorful blob folks show up, like, who are these guys? Why did they just show up out of nowhere in the story? Again, if you're a hardcore fan and if you've been following these games, it's easy to understand where these folks come from, but in the context of the book itself, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It just drastically shifts the focus of the antagonists, and I mean, we'll, we'll talk about it in more detail when we get to it. Again, it's a lot of fun, but in terms of just telling a story, it's a little out of the blue. My point is, you're going to get the most out of this book if you play Sonic video games. That's it. And the other big gripe I have is that the book is now on hiatus. So we have this big long arc that a lot of fans are feeling is dragging on a bit too long, where Sonic is trying to deal with this virus that's taking over the world. They had to stop for a while while we uh deal with a virus that's uh taking over the... <clears throat> mm. But again, silver lining here. If you've never read a Sonic comic book, the hiatus starts with issue 27, so you only have 27 books to get through. And trust me, you're going to be engaged. A lot of this stuff, especially the Metal Virus stuff, works a lot better if you read it back to back. Trust me, waiting for some of this stuff from month to month just does not feel worth it. Regardless, it's good storytelling, and when it's all done, and when it's all put together, I'm going to really appreciate these smaller moments where we can see these characters actually take in what's happening, really react with each other. And again, these folks still rely on this for a living. So even if they're in hiatus, just going out and showing your support and actually buying these books through Comixology, because you can't go to a comic shop right now probably, is probably going to prove pretty helpful. So that's my two cents on this particular topic, where to start with Sonic comics. Once again, I'm going to have to reiterate because there's going to be people disagreeing with me. That's not to take away from the legendary Archie book or UK's Fleetway book. Truth be told, I need to read a lot more Fleetway and really try and break down and comprehend all the craziness that's happening in the Archie books so I can best explain it to you so you have some context. Because there's a lot of good stuff there I want to recommend to you, but it's hard to tell you where to start. Because what the book was in the early 
90s is vastly different from what the book was just a few years ago. Even a couple years into it, it was a completely different beast. There's a whole lot of spin-offs and like a monarchy and in the future Sonic's a king. It's it's wackadoo. In the UK, like again, I gotta really get into that. Like Super Sonic's a psychopath in that, and that's that's pretty much anyone from the US knows just offhand about that book. But as you can tell, there's a lot to get into there, and I'm really excited to jump into that. I'm really excited to talk more about IDW. I just don't want to get into too many spoilers if you're just trying to find a recommendation on where to begin. And I'm really excited to bring this show to you. So if you have any suggestions on what you want to see, how you'd like me to lay this out, be it by character bio or story arc, or maybe we break it down to like one video about IDW, one about Archie, one about Fleetway. However we do it, it's going to be a lot of fun. And the folks on Patreon are going to help guide where this goes. And this series is going to be timed exclusive on Patreon. So if you haven't pitched in there yet, only cost you a buck. And to everybody who has pitched in and Patreon is watching this right now for the first time, thank you guys so much for your support, especially in this crazy, crazy time. I cannot thank you enough, and I can't wait to jump back into this. So until next time, toot toot Sonic Speed Readers. <laughs>